This is the iPhone 10. Apple calls it the future. And quite literally, it's not available until November 3rd. These are available now. Also new, the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus. This is our review. Every year, Apple releases a pair of iPhones, and picking between them has always been as easy as small or big, one camera or two. But this year, Apple is releasing a third iPhone, but it also comes with a hefty price tag. Still, the choice has become so much more complicated. Now with that shiny new iPhone 10 on the horizon, it's easy to overlook these solid but familiar new iPhones. So today, as we take the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus around town for a review, we seek to find answers to these questions. Are the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus worth buying, or should you wait for the iPhone 10? Hi, I'm Michael Josh and you're watching Gadget Match. If you're not yet a Match Kateer, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. We'd love to have you on board. You know what, folks? It goes without saying, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus are great phones, but it's almost October 2017, and the bigger question is, are these good enough to compete with the best of 2017 and beyond? Let's start with what's the same and what's different. Up front, just like it's been for the last four years, the form factor is the same. Take a look here in front, it's identical. And if I'm being honest, in 2017, the design looks boring. Top and bottom bezels are way too big. There's nothing wrong with it, but because the front of the phone is probably the object that you see the most each day, you want it to look great not just good. When you flip it around, you'll find the only cosmetic difference from the iPhone 7, a glass back. The glass looks great and very premium, more than the aluminum shell it once had. It's less slippery and for some reason, not particularly as much of a fingerprint magnet. But because it's glass, the chances of it shattering when dropped are much higher. So right off the bat, I recommend using a case. Apple sells really nice leather and silicone cases, and last year's cases work on this year's phone and vice versa. But having said that, once you put on the case, there really is no telling which is which. This is my iPhone 7 Plus, and this is the case that I've been using over the last year. And this is the iPhone 8 Plus with a similar silicone case. After using this phone for about a day, and once all that excitement and hype kind of died down, I looked at both phones and said, hmm, they're the same phone. But the biggest improvements to the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus are all internal. Most deserving of your attention is what Apple calls the A11 Bionic chip. Sure, the name is marketing hyperbole, but apart from being a more powerful and efficient chip, it also makes the phone smarter, allowing it to use machine learning and artificial intelligence to make things like taking photos or augmented reality better. Augmented reality is not new, and it's not a feature exclusive to the iPhone 8. But since Apple's developer conference in June, Apple has been pushing its AR kit to make it easier and cheaper for developers to create augmented reality apps for iOS. Following the rollout of iOS 11, the latest generation of iPhones and iPads got the ability to run AR apps. On the iPhone 8, the experience is supposed to be better and faster. While we enjoyed apps like this one from IKEA that allowed us to place AR versions of actual IKEA furniture in the real world, it was the game The Machines that really showed what the iPhone 8 could do in terms of augmented reality. It was a gaming experience unlike any we've tried. On paper, the battery capacities of the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus are disparaging. Apple is never one to mention specific battery capacities on their iPhone, so it wasn't until third-party teardowns revealed that the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus have smaller batteries than their predecessors. But Apple promises that thanks to a more energy-efficient chip, performance will be the same. In our tests, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus lasted about a whole day of average use. Good news is there are a host of charging-related updates Grades, but all come with caveats. First, the iPhone 8 finally supports wireless charging using the already used Qi standard. Unfortunately, wireless chargers are an expensive accessory and places like this one where wireless charging pads are built into countertops are still rare. The iPhone 8 also now supports fast charging and can go from 0 to 50% in 30 minutes, but not with the charger and cable that come bundled with the box. Instead, you'll have to buy these two accessories, a $49 29-watt adapter and a $25 USB-C to lightning cable. 
Everything else is pretty standard. The same retina display now with True Tone technology that adjusts color temperature to lighting conditions. Forward and downward facing stereo speakers, one of the best placements on a phone today. There's still 3D touch, water and dust resistance, and a Touch ID fingerprint sensor, perhaps the last iPhone to have it. Where the iPhone 8 really shines is its updated camera. And just recently, DxOMark gave the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus its highest scores ever, beating out former co-champs, the original Google Pixel and the HTC U11. While megapixels didn't change, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus have larger image sensors, which is always a great thing when it comes to cameras and image quality. Among other improvements include hardware-based noise reduction and what Apple claims to be the best video capturing device in the biz. Take a look at this video montage. And now photo samples we took around Singapore, both during the day and at night. To test camera improvements and noise reduction, we shot some side-by-sides with the iPhone 7 Plus. Overall, the iPhone 8 performs better, especially in low-light situations, letting in more light and handling noise better. We also took the same photos using the Galaxy Note 8. While subjective, we prefer how the Note 8 performs in low light, and its optical image stabilization when using 2 times optical zoom means better zoomed-in shots. For the high-res samples, you can visit GadgetMatch.com. Only on the iPhone 8 Plus, because of its dual camera, Portrait Mode gets a new feature called Portrait Lighting, which uses deep learning to shoot photos like they were shot in a studio. When it works, it looks great, and you can get photos like this. But there are times when it doesn't work because it can't detect the boundaries of frizzy or spiky hair, for example. Thankfully, the software is still in beta, and with machine learning, it should improve over time. So, are the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus your gadget match? Are you an Apple fan or a loyal iPhone user? Then you already have your answer and are probably just watching this for affirmation. Upgrade if you're due for one. Get the 8 for its smaller form factor and if you could care less about those portrait features. But really do consider the Plus model. Its size is not for everyone, but it can grow on you. It did for me. The iPhone 10 drops in two months, and a lot of folks have said that when that happens, it will render the iPhone 8 obsolete. But that just isn't the case. Sure, it may not have that flashy, borderless display that a lot of its rivals have this year, but it's still a great choice, especially if you're upgrading. Both these phones are still some of the best we've reviewed this year, and both deserve the Gadget Match seal of approval. Still thinking about the 10? Here are some things to consider. In Apple's world, the iPhone 8 Plus is $200 cheaper, retains the home button, which may or may not be faster and more reliable than Face ID, and if you're a Plus user with big hands, then this phone is still the biggest of the bunch. It's still going to be as snappy, and on the Plus model, is going to have almost the same camera. Wait for the 10 if money isn't an issue, and if you want the most advanced iPhone around. Its true depth camera system sounds revolutionary, and we can't wait to see what it can do. The iPhone 7 Plus is still a phone we can wholeheartedly recommend. Maybe even more so now. And don't worry about wireless charging, it might take another year or so until it really becomes mainstream. Should you even buy an iPhone 6S? Nope, it may still have a headphone jack, but its camera and battery life are disappointing. And finally, if you're an Android user looking to switch, I'd pass on the 8, 
but consider the 10. It's the closest feature for feature to what the best Android smartphones of 2017 have to offer. And that was our iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus review. What did you think about the new iPhone? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, follow Gadget Match on social media, and make GadgetMatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.